Welcome to Unit 5. My name is Jan Mattes, and I'm now going to give you an overview of what we deliver in terms of customer analytics with SAP Business by Design. So you've seen in all of our demos and sessions basically parts of analytics, and you recognize it's one of our core strengths. Nevertheless, I want to shed more light on what we can really do here in terms of customer analytics. So basically, having a view about your customer engagement, of the customer engagement of your teams, your products, and of course your customers itself. So it is basically that we provide the embedded tracking and planning functionalities and also enable especially the business users to analyze and to simulate uh, what they can achieve with their sales opportunities. So um, by this we basically um, enable the users to have an interactive drill down with the predefined key figures and uh, also to extend those if this is really needed. We have more than 500 reports across all application areas and 80 of them are tailored for marketing, sales and service employees. But you can imagine um, every customer has his own set on of re reports on top. And this is again one of our key strengths. Our reports are basically embedded in every work center. So you find every work center a pre-definition or pre-selection of the most important standard reports. Um, and you can easily extend those. Um, customer analytics is in, in itself not uh, a big difference compared to other analytical areas. We mainly support the managers and the employees of marketing, sales and service. So uh, we have a, a set of predefined key figures like net sales, number of contacts, um, and we have, of course have the customer specific characteristics and the most prominent ones are my sales organization, um, my uh, distribution channels, um, all of this can be used as characteristics for building your own reports and for drilling down into the details, um, also into the details of each transaction. So you can directly navigate from the report into the, um, let's say, uh, the account fact sheet or into the campaign overview, or you can also trigger the creation of a target group from such a report. Um, the reporting itself is not only limited to our web UI. Um, you've seen it also in our mobile demo, uh, how you can leverage that. Uh, but it's also possible to use Excel uh, for slicing and dicing. So it's not only limited to, to the uh, areas that you already know. Uh, you can really uh, use it in Excel as well. And you will see in my short demo also how you can leverage Excel for planning. And this is basically uh, just the overview about our planning scenario. Here we have really an integrated process which allows you to copy a plan, a sales target plan, um, massage the data in the sales target plan for the next year, and then to deploy it to your users, to your sales employees, that they can throughout the year um, work against those targets and hopefully overachieve. And last but not least, we also have abilities to simulate, uh, especially when it comes to the sales pipeline. There, the sales employees can uh, see, first of all, all of their opportunities in the system, but also do a what-if uh, simulation. Um, if, let's say, the chance of success or the value of an opportunity increases or de decreases, what will that mean for my pipeline? And um, um, you will see that shortly in a demo how to do that. So let's switch into the system. This is an overview I have defined, mainly embedded um, predefined reports like the sales or the volume or the lead funnel. Um, you see here a couple of key, f uh, key figures. I have also here my handcrafted KPI marketing generated revenue and the number of critical payment activities. This can be the starting point to drill uh, down into the details. But um, I want to show you now basically how a sales manager can now define sales targets to set really specific targets on organizational levels. So I go into the sales planning work center view. And here I see the list of all of my active sales target plans. So you see it's for 2018, there is a plan. And what I would like to do now is to set up the new plan for 2019. And that's why I simply copy uh, the existing sales plan for the sales organization, Sales Pro. I simply need to change here the year and say, OK, it's from January 2019 until December 2019. Um, assignments and plan currency stay all the same. Also, the dimensions, the planning di dimensions I want to be using. You see it's on employees. So here are the employees working for my area of responsibility as a manager. 
and also in which sales units they are organized. So you see it's a couple of sales units, Sales Pro, Fresno and Canton. Um, I don't want to change that uh, to make life very simple. I simply click here on Next. Now I can easily decide what data I want to copy. So I can also uh, select here the year, let's say 2017 or 16, uh, if I want to use that as a basis. My life is way easier if I simply can select existing data and, and use that as a starting point. I uh, define here what I want to see and what I want to coffee, copy, and then I get um, a view of the already um, uh, achieved targets for that year. So this is now 2018. You see not too much data because this is a reference system in there. Uh, but nevertheless, I want to use that as a basis for my new plan. I confirm here with Next. And then I simply click here on Finish. And with that, the new plan is created. Now exactly with the figures from 2018 but because, well, basically, um, I want to achieve, of course, more, so that's why I now go into uh, the details and uh, in Excel I'm able then to really massage the data and change the data as per my needs and you see in a few seconds how powerful that is. So first of all, this is the data I copied. You see I pre-populated all of this data into my new plan. So you see here are the sales units uh, in which my team is organized. It's basically three sales units. I see my team, the team members, which are working for the various sales units. And I have here the targets for each month and uh, a total column where I see the total target. So as mentioned, I want to increase uh, sales here. I want to have it, let's say, uh, 280,000. I change here one of those cells. I also say, OK, my sales team, Sales Pro, they shall be doing something like 80,000. Enter that. Oh, no, that was 8,000. Let me make it a bit bigger. So, and uh, in addition, um, my um, sales team Canton shall do, let's say, 160,000. So you see, those yellow cells are the ones I changed. The rest will remain same, but now I have a problem. So I have changed in various areas. So what to do now? Well, what I could do now is basically to send the input to by design, and by design will then automatically distribute the values and adhere and keep the values which I manually entered. You see, 2080, uh, 2080 in total, 80 for Sales Pro, and 160 for my Sales Canton organization, and the rest is then basically distributed on the available um, organizations that I uh, also had in the past. So very, very simple for me to set new targets. I simply save this now, and with that, all the data is being persisted in business by design, and as soon as I release the plan, also my team members will see those new figures as targets for the next year. Um, and uh, as you recognize here on the right-hand side, I can also easily change the drill down. So let's say if I want to remove the employees um, to make it more granular and not see the values per month, then I have a, a very easy and uh, nice looking table. And um, if I zoom in here, then you could see basically my total targets. And all of this, this is now persisted into business by design. And um, yeah, this was uh, basically how simple sales planning can be. I only need to release it now and then, well, I'm done. Now it's my team to be executed. OK, so let's have a look into um, our simulation capabilities. Um, this is now uh, about simulating opportunity pipeline. I go here into the new business work center. And what I get here as a sales employee is, uh, first of all, a view on all of my opportunities which I have in my pipeline. And my manager uses that to report back the total pipeline to the top management. What I see here is you know, all opportunities which are assigned to me doesn't look so good, actually, because they are all red. They are all stalled. Um, it would be better if some of them would be green, because then uh, I would be having progress. But unfortunately, I've not been touching the system for a longer time. What I could do now for all those opportunities is to start simulation mode. And with that, I can see here really the details of all the opportunities. And if I, let's say, increase here the chance of success of some of the opportunities to 80%, then you see also it's directly depicting here in my sales pipeline the size of the individual bubbles change. I can also change here, let's say, um, 
the value, the absolute values of uh, an in individual opportunity, and then see how my pipeline evolves and changes with that. So that is uh, giving me a great deal of insight on what might happen. And if I'm happy with that, then I simply need to change the opportunities and click here on save. And then everything, every opportunity which I now changed will be saved and will be made transparent to my man manager. Uh, if I'm not so confident, then I can also easily cancel the simulation and then all will be looking as before. So, so much for simulation and target planning functionalities. Um, what you have seen now is that the by design, custom analytics is extremely powerful. It shares the same concepts and technologies you've seen in uh, all other areas. And in addition, it also provides uh, detailed target planning and, and setting functionality. You can simulate your sales pipeline. You can view your sales pipeline in a what-if approach and um, basically directly navigate to business entities and business data and also trigger actions like creation of target groups. I hope you like what you've seen and stay tuned for the last session of this week.